Happy Monday Knitters! I'm Louise from Wildflower Wool and welcome back to my channel. This is another episode of New Start Monday Knits. You will find me here every week showing you two new projects that I'm casting on. The first one is always going to be a dishcloth because I'm working on the Yarn Hoarders Dishcloth Challenge, trying to get at least 52 dishcloths done per week. And the second is going to be a random new start that I just pick. It may be with stash yarn. If I've gone shopping this past weekend, maybe it will be with a new purchase. So let's jump in because we are now, when it is February 24th, we're the last week of February, which means I'm getting a little stack of new starts. Some I have finished, some I'm still working on. So let's just jump in and I will show you what I'm working on. Let's go right into European Road Trip Shawl. This one here I've been having a lot of fun with. This is my Patton's Stretch Sock Yarn. I've got the increases finished. Last week I put a little stitch marker on my, or Progress Keeper, on my work. This is what I got done this week, which is not bad. I didn't measure, I don't know, it's a couple of inches. This shawl is easy and quick to pick up. A row of stockinette, a row of knit, a row of purl. You can start and stop in the middle of the row, the end of the row, doesn't really matter. There's no rows to count. It's easy, easy, easy just to pick this up wherever you go. Perfect on the go knitting. I'm on ball number two. I can, oh, I can feel there's, oh, look at that. Can you see? <laughs> I like feeling that the ball is getting squishy. Then I know I'm balls getting smaller, shells getting bigger. This one is on track, loving it, love it. My other shawl that I've got on the go, I didn't get it quite as much done on this as I did last week. There's the ball, pretty hand dyed yarn, dye nomadic yarns, I believe this is. And this is how far I am, this is how big it is. Got a fair, a few more increases put on here so it's looking wider. Here's my marker. So this is what I've done this past week. I've got another uh, one, two, three points. I'm not sure. I don't know if this was a new point or a no point. Maybe this was an old point. Maybe I've just got two more repeats done on it. Anyways, this was taking a little bit longer now because obviously my rows are getting longer, but it's still fun to do. Again, eight row repeat is not as easy as a road trip shawl for on the go knitting because you do have to keep track of those eight rows but still pretty easy going pretty easy if you can read your your rows or read your knitting or count your rows you don't have to have the pattern handy for every single row you can kind of it's the pattern is pretty easy to memorize but I still keep my pattern with me just for good measure because I don't want to rip out rows <laughs> But it is another fun one. Hitchhiker, Martina Bum. It's a good, it's it's a good project to have on your needles too, I would always say. Hitchhiker is a good go-to project. What else did I work on? My mitt. I think last video I showed you my mitt. The mitt was done, but I still had DPNs in the thumb. So I picked up, I cut my yarn thread it onto a darning needle. I picked up those, I think there was eight stitches left at the top of the thumb. I closed up the thumb, I wove in the ends. I had a few, I had a, a, like just gaps here from picking up stitches around the thumbs. So I've closed those in. I haven't done any embroidery on here yet, but I think I will. Um, I think I will. I think I will. I think I, I see I see pink flowers on here for some reason. I am not a pink person, but for some reason, yellow and pink together, I really, really like. So stay tuned. We'll see what see what happens with these. This one's finished. And then, of course, I immediately cast on, I almost said sock, mitten number two. So here it is, cast on. This is my super simple mitten pattern. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Both mitts are knit the same, so there's not a specific left or right mitten. They And they work fine. You can wear them on either hand. So I've got a few inches of ribbing done, knit two, purl two, long tail cast on, 
knit two, purl two. And I did this, I believe I did four inches on here because I got a little carried away. I was having fun just ribbing round and round and round. So I will just measure, make sure that they match. And then I've got a few rows of just plain stockinette and then we get to do the fun thumb gusset increases. So this is started, ready to go for this week. The other thing I worked on, oh, this one here, I'll show you this one. So remember last week, my dishcloth, how I'm trying desperately to keep up, get one done a week, or at least hopefully it evens out at the end of the month, uh, for a month. And I did not get this one done last week. This was the four corner dishcloth that um, one of the, one of the, viewers, our podcast, the Fiber Friends podcast viewer, um, Facebook member group had left, she was posting pictures of these, this four corner dishcloth and she had done it in variegated yarn and it looked so fantastic. But remember I had all these balls of white and I thought, oh, well, I'll just go ahead and I'll do this in white. And ta-da, I finished it. Last week I showed you it and it was not finished because I had messed up my last corner Somehow I was working on it at knit night and there I get I see I know I should never do this because I talk more than I pay attention to my pattern and I got my rows mixed up and I got my corner turned the wrong way. But now look at it. Look at this. You can see all of these diagonal lines all meet up and my cast off row joined with my cast on row. So I fixed it. So what I had to do was I had to pull back this corner and I pulled back into the third, um, the third corner. So like the third block, because when I pulled back, I wanted to make sure I didn't do the same mistake again. When I pulled back right to the last row, I wasn't sure if I had done an extra row or if I'd missed a row. So I, I pulled out a couple more rows until I could count my stitches and see where I was according to the pattern to get back on track. And sure enough, what I had done, I had did an, an extra plain knit row at the end. So at the end, there's 19 stitches for each one of these corners. I knit across 19, and then instead of going back to the beginning of the pattern to work the whole um, row, I think it was like 54 rows of repeats. Don't stress, don't worry, if you wanna knit this this pattern, don't think 54 rows is long because they're all really short, short rows. So 54 rows or 52, whatever it is, goes by really, really quick. But what I had done was I had, instead of starting back at row two, I did row and knit across row 19 again. So that flipped my work. So then when I started doing short rows, they were going the wrong way. Anyways, I figured it out, pulled it out, figured out where I was, picked up the stitches again and carried on and re-knit it. And then I had to join. The pattern tells you to start with a provisional cast on so that you have live stitches on waist yarn. You work all the way around and when you get to the end, instead of casting off, you've got live stitches and then you will just graft them or do a Kitchener stitch together. I didn't do that. I just did a regular long tail cast on, worked all the way around, and I cast off, which meant that I had to seam it together. Um, I didn't do a mattress stitch because mattress stitch would have left me a little bit of a seam on the wrong side of my dishcloth. But there again, I was thinking, eh, it's a dishcloth. If there's a little bit of a seam, eh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna worry about it, right? But in the end, what I did was more of a whip stitch. So there is no seam. That's the front side. And you know, there's a little bit of a gap there maybe, but I, I don't, you know, I'm not gonna worry about it for a dishcloth. And this is the back side, and there's no seam. I just picked up one leg of this stitch and one leg of this stitch and just pulled them together. And I just did that all the way down. And then in the center, there was a little bit of like a, a really big yarn over and I just kind of worked that together to pull that closed. So I'm happy with this. And you know what? If you don't mess up the pattern, this is a really fun knit. So I may do this again because this is nice and the finished product looks really cute. So I like it. I'm happy that I did it. I'm happy I fixed it. Happy it's done. So now I am back on track 
with my dishcloths because this is the one that I finished for this past week. I think this is dishcloth number nine. And I had asked for people to leave messages in the comments for me of what their favorite dishcloths were. And you guys left me a lot. You gave me a couple of sites to go check out on Ravelry. And apparently now I haven't had a chance to do this yet, but somebody told me there is a dishcloth group over on Ravelry where every week they do a different pattern. And apparently my Diamond Braid dishcloth was one of the patterns of the week, which is so super cool. So I am gonna go check out their Ravelry group and check out their pictures and, and just leave some comments on some of them. And there was a, what, a starfish. There is, um, yeah, you left me some comments. There was one, there was a double thick that I really wanna go check out. So I've made notes of all of these names and I'm gonna like slot them in in the next coming weeks. This one here was one that one of our viewers left me a comment. This was her favorite dishcloth. And I think really what it is, is a broken rib pattern. Um, it's just two rows, guys. It is a plain knit row. And then the opposite row is knit one per one, knit one per one. Super, super easy. How can it get any easier than that? And when she said this pattern, I'm like, I have done this before. I think I did a scarf in it. So I, I cast on immediately. This is it. So this is a finished dishcloth. Now, I am honestly not sure. I really think that this is probably supposed to be the front side. This is the smoother side. So, which looks like there is, there's a column of knit and there's the broken pearl side. But honestly, I like this side. This has got the bumps on it. This has got the texture. So, I don't know which side I like better. But I'm kind of thinking this side. I think I wove my ends in on this side. I don't know, but you can't really see the ends either. Oh, well, there's a little one right there. But really, I think I like this. I like the texture. So what I did, this was dishy. This was this ball of dishy. I think, I don't know the colorway. I think something like sunshine, I'm sure, is what the name of it is. I used a four millimeter needle. I cast on 40 stitches because you need an even number of stitches. I worked one row of knit, then the second row was knit one, purl one, all the way across, and then just repeated. A row of knit, then a row of purl, knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, rib, all the way across, knit, knit one, purl one, all the way across, knit. Just finished all the way up. I finished with a row of ribbing, knit one, purl one, all the way across, and then what would have been my normal knit row, I cast off. It lays fairly flat. It, does, it curls a little bit, but there again, it's a dishcloth. I don't think I'm gonna worry about that. I like it. I like the texture. I love the color. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much for leaving me comments and letting me know what your favorite dishcloths are. I'm gonna knit a few more of your favorites and I will show them to you in the next, you know, next few weeks as I finish them up. So what I had originally said I was going to do with my yellow was knit a mitered square dishcloth. Well, I started, <laughs> but because I got excited about this broken rib dishcloth, I kind of moved on right to it and my poor mitered square has not got finished. But that's okay because I still think I am on track. I think this is dishcloth number 10. So I'm just gonna put her away on it this week. And what I've done, again, I've got a four millimeter um, needle, dishy cotton, two, and this again is a two row repeat. I cast on 65 stitches, which might end up with a little bit smaller dishcloth than I would normally do, but that's okay. I'm not gonna, we'll see. The only way you know is if you try it. So 65, so this is going to end up about 32 stitches wide. Um, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I think it's going to be all right. So what I did for this, what I am doing here, mitered squares. So that is where you are decreasing two stitches, one on either side, of your 
center stitch. Now, what if I, okay, this is with the right side. So the right side on this, can you see how that center stitch, it's raised? There is a bump there. I don't know how I can get you to really, I think you can just see that center stitch, right? On the back side, you don't see it as well. There's actually a little bit of a dip there. So this is all done in garter stitch. So what I'm doing is I've cast on 60, what did I say, 65 stitches because I want to have an odd number because I need that center stitch. So I've got 32 on one side, 32 on the other, and then that single stitch in the center. Cast on 65, I knit one row. The next row, I knit 31 stitches, and I need to work over the center three stitches. The first two stitches I came to of those center three, I put my needle in two of the, those two, two stitches, two of the three. <laughs> as it, you put your needle in as if you're gonna knit two stitches together, but you just slip them onto the right hand needle. Then I knit that third stitch, then I passed the two stitches I slipped up over and off, just like a cast off. So that is using those three center stitches. The first two are slipped, the third one is knit, and then the first two you slip, you pass them over. And then you just knit to the end. So you always have even stitches on either side. So I had 32 and 32, then I had 30 and 30, 29, you're right, and it just keeps going down. So what you can do is you can count your stitches. So you can keep track of, say, knit 29, get to the, then you have to stop at your center three, slip the two, work the single, pass the two over, then knit 29. Do a plain knit row. Then you'll knit 28. You'll get to those center three, slip the two, knit the third one, pass the two over, then carry on knit 28. So your stitches on either side always stay the same. You always have those center three stitches you're working your decrease on. And it starts to give you a really nice center line. It shows up more if you were doing stockinette stitch, but you can still see it in garter. So I'll see, can you, maybe I'll try to just do a picture and post it on Instagram. But anyways, and as you can see, we're getting this nice point where the decreases are pulling our side stitches up and we're getting a nice point. And then you're just gonna keep going and try not to drop your stitches off the other end of the needle. Hazard of working with circular needles. Anyways, look at that. So it's kind of has a weird shape to it right now, but I'm just gonna keep going until this all fills in and it's gonna turn into a square. This we'll keep working on for next week. The other thing that I have been really working on a lot this week is my sock. I started this because I'm teaching a sock class at Little Red Mitten. And of course I needed a sock to knit along with my students so I can show them what the next steps are. So using some Patton's Croy out of my well curated stash and this is sock number one. I cast on 64 stitches. I did some ribbing. I did a nice long leg. And I'm doing this all on a little nine inch circular needle. I know some people have said, how do you do the heel on here? And it can be done. It is a little fiddly and you do have to kind of squeeze your stitches all on here, but it does work. I knit the heel flap. I turned the heel and I have now picked up all my gusset stitches. The only thing that I did do was put on stitch markers. So I would know where the um, gusset decreases are gonna happen. The pattern I'm working from is my super simple cuff down sock and it is written to use DPNs. But once you get the, the idea of how a sock is constructed, and however the pattern is written, you can kind of modify that for however you're knitting in the round. You can, you know, the pattern would work totally fine if you're doing magic loop, and it works fine if you were doing a little nine inch circular as well. So the only thing I've put stitch markers on here, just so I would know 
where my beginning of the round is, which is in the center of my heel. I just put a marker in there. And these are my gusset stitches I picked up and I put a marker. These are my instep stitches that go over the top of my foot and I've put another marker. And these are my other gusset stitches I picked up along the other side of the heel flap. So I know that when I am going down this way, I'm gonna knit right to the end to my last three stitches. I'm gonna work my knit two together and knit one stitch. Then I work around across my instep stitches. I get to this marker. I'm gonna knit one stitch and do a slip slip knit. This way I know exactly where my decreases are gonna go and I just work round and round. I'm decreasing my stitches, so I'm gonna get back down to my original number of stitches, which was 64, and then I'm gonna carry on for the foot. So that is what I'm working on this sock. Um, I'm only going down as far as the toe because that's what we're working on this weekend. So sock knitting is in my future because I have to get these gusset decreases done and the foot hip knit. Okay, I think that, oh no, it doesn't. There is still one more. My yarn that I purchased last week at Little Red Mitten. Remember these two balls? I'll show you the ball band. I purchased it at Little Red Mitten, but it came, or it was dyed, well, Leo and Roxy yarn. These two balls are not dyed because they are the natural colors. This is the wool and cotton blend. This is their eco... What was it called? Eco, Eco Wool and Organic Cotton Blend. Oh my gosh, you guys. This yarn is fantastic. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it so much that I'm not even concerned that my project is not on the needles. <laughs> this is still a work in progress. Look at those two fantastic colors. Love them. There's no names on these natural ones, they're just numbers, but Leo and Roxy has dyed a handful of colors in this yarn. There was a, um, like a forest green, there was a purple, there was a ready color, and a yellow. Um, and there might have been a couple more. Those are just the ones I remember off the top of my head because I was just too focused on these natural colors. So what I've done for this, you know what, I'm just going to get this right off the needle because... This has just been a glorified ga gauge swatch this week. I My original plan was to knit this into two, a two-color herringbone. And um, so that's why I went, I went with a bigger needle because herringbone um, is, a bit of a, is, is a bit of a tighter stitch. So you always want to go a bit, at least I need to go a, a bigger needle size. So I pulled it. This is more of a worsted weight yarn. So I pulled, a, I grabbed, what a, I think a six millimeter needle. I think that's what I was using here was a six millimeter. I think it was too big. So I started doing this in two color herringbone and I was like, mm, I wasn't loving it the way I thought I was going to. So I pulled it out and I started this shawl right here. It's actually my spring garden shawl and it is done with a knot stitch which is a really fun pattern. And that pattern is called to use two balls of yarn. So I thought, huh, let me try it in that. So this is what I've started working on. And you can see here, so when you work the knot stitch, you get little yarn overs in here. So it does have a lacy look to it, even though it's not technically a lace pattern. But there again, the pattern is not showing up real good because I think my needle size is a little too big and all of the stitches are just a little bit too loose, so I'm not really getting good stitch definition in here. So I'm going to pull this out and I'm going to still do my spring garden. I think the two color herringbone is just on hold for right now. I think I'm going to go to my spring garden and use this, but I need to go down a needle size. So I may even, I may just try a five millimeter. What is that, a US eight? Did I go the right way with that? I always have trouble with those converting millimeters to US. But I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try this again in a smaller size, but I love this yarn. So knitting a gauge swatch and pulling it out and doing it a couple times has been no big deal because I've actually loved knitting this. So this really hasn't gone too far, but I did get my yarn caked up because remember, I decided that if I'm gonna buy some yarn this year, it has to be really, really, really special stuff and it needs to get 
wound up and on the needles, which happened with this. So I'm, I'm happy with, I'm good, I'm glad. I have no buyer's remorse. I'm not worried because this is the yarn that broke my no yarn shopping spree that lasted all of what, six weeks? So I know that's pretty sad. I think I think I should have started this episode, you know, by saying, hi, I'm Louise, I'm a yarn addict, because apparently I can only go about six weeks without buying yarn. But that's okay. It makes me happy and I like it. And I'm really looking forward to actually wearing this this spring, making it a nice big wrap that I can just put on the house when I go out for a walk. So now I just got to get it cast on and spend some dedicated knitting time to get it done before it does end up too hot that I'm not going to wear wool. But it has cotton in it, so that I may maybe that'll stretch the season into spring and summer a little bit more. Those cool summer nights. Okay, so that leads me into this week's new start. And it also leads me to having to admit that I bought another ball of yarn. I say that like it's a bad thing and it's not a bad thing because if you like buying yarn, there's a, like I've said a million times, there are so many other things that I could be spending on my, my money on that are a whole lot worse than a fantastic new ball of yarn. So I did come home with this. I went and visited my lovely friend Suzanne at Knit Stitch Stratford and she dyes yarn. Oh, I think I've got the, the ball band here. She dyes yarn under the name of Yarn Bird Studio. And I love that on the back of her tag. Lovely yarn for lovely people. I love that because that sounds just exactly like Suzanne. Anyways, I saw this skein sitting on the shelf and it called to me. I think I've talked before about how yarn talks to me. Oh my gosh, this literally almost jumped off the shelf at me. The colors are so bright and beautiful, but there's red in it, which is not my color at all. Even less so my color than pink. But I don't know. This, this ball just said, bring me home. And it totally said it wanted to be a herringbone shawl. So I started it. Suzanne was lovely enough to wind it for me while we chatted and I brought it home and it is just barely started. And I thought I never ever defined what a new, you know, what a new start was. So I'm thinking even though I only have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I have nine stitches on my needle <laughs> and this is about eight rows of knitting but I think that it is it is officially started. And look at those colors. Oh, I think herringbone is a great pattern for these variegated balls of yarn. I'm I'm loving this. Even though I only have a few rows done, I love it. I love I am in love with this ball, you guys. I don't know. I haven't decided yet if this will be something that I will keep. I don't know if I like the color, like it. I don't know. I just like the colors, even though it's not really something I would wear. Maybe I'll surprise myself. Maybe I will keep it for me or maybe it will go in the Christmas box and somebody will get gifted this lovely ball of yarn that's going to turn into a herringbone shawl. So I'm going to keep working on this this week, add it into the rotation. So what I did, I spent Sunday just working, kind of picking up every project and working on everything for like an hour, getting a few rows few stitches into this. There was a few, I've got a few other more projects started that I haven't shown you today, but I will save those for another video. So my two new starts, mine two, my herringbone shawl with Yarnbird Studio yarn. It's a one of a kind, so there's no color name to it. The other thing is my dishcloth. I have got a box here that I have just kind of been throwing in odds and ends. So I think I want to use up some of these. I have, oh, I have a little bit of this. I love this cotton that I was working on a few weeks ago. 
there's not too much of that. If I roll that up into a ball, I'm probably, I don't know, it's going to be something looking something like this probably. So I think I'm just going to do a scrappy dishcloth. I may go back through and check some of those sites that you guys left me the names of, and I will see what I can find. I may just do my super simple dishcloth. I maybe will just even do something simple like just do plain seed stitch, something easy, something quick. I don't know. We'll see. But that's the yarn I'm going to use because I want to use up some more of these odd bits. And hopefully I will get I will get the Mender Square dishcloth finished and start a brand new one because I think that'll give me a little bit of a buffer. Have a, a, I think I'm ahead of dishcloth. So maybe this will give me two ahead. I'm not sure. I need to count the weeks. I'm sure somebody will give me an update here on how far ahead I am. But if I can grab, if every once in a while I can sneak in two dishcloths a week, that will give me a nice little buffer and I won't have to stress. But as I said before too, I'm not going to stress because... This is supposed to be a fun challenge. And if I it comes Sunday night and my dishcloth isn't 100% finished, I'm not going to worry about it because I know I will catch up in the end. It'll all even out. All right, everybody. I think that is it for my new start. So tell me how your week has been. I feel like I've gotten a lot done, even though it's been a lot on a lot of different projects. It doesn't look like a whole lot, but I felt like I've spent a lot of time knitting this week. I would love to know what you're working on. Leave me some comments below. Please keep giving me some dishcloth patterns. I would love to know what your favorites are. I will leave the, um, I'll just write out what I had said the little pattern was for the broken rib dishcloth and thank you so much for recommending this again because I absolutely love it. I will definitely make more of these. Um, and on Instagram, post some pictures. A few people have been posting pictures and using the hashtag new start Monday knits. And then that way I can follow along. I can like and comment on your projects and see what you're starting this week. Have a fantastic week, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. As always, you can hit the subscribe button so you know exactly when um, I upload these videos and you can, you know, see them as soon as they're uploaded to YouTube and you can keep up with me on what I'm doing and then share your comments right back. I love chatting in the comments with everybody. I do read all of them and I do answer all of them. I do I do know right now there's the last couple that um, people had commented on last week's video. I have not commented back yet, but I will get to it, and, but I have definitely read them all. So thank you so much, everybody. Have a fantastic week. Cast something on if you want to, or just keep working along with me on a, a current project you've got on your needles. So Leave me some comments, let's chat, and I will see you right back here on Friday because it is the last Friday of the month. And I will be showing you some finished projects on a finished Friday video. So stay tuned for that and have a fantastic week, everybody. Bye for now.